was working at a hospital. Uh, and during that work, uh, and that part, cranial was very far away from me, but I got a head accident and uh, was hit in a sailing boat accident. And I went to many, many places in the hospital to find out why I got headache and why I got difficulties in reading uh, and become more and more stiff in the neck. And after years of search or years of investigation, I could not find anything. And then one of the guys in the hospital knew something about cranial work. So he suggested that there was an oysterpath who, who practiced that in Copenhagen. So I, I went to her and I could feel that there was a very, she was touching the right spot. Um, so, I, so I start to have uh, many sessions and treatments. Um, and then I got more and more interested in to explain not only the effects of the neck, but like the effects on my hip, my legs, my arms, my, my how I use my eyes, my hearing, and and I, I started to, to study it. And I came to this American institute, Oblitz Institute. And uh, after some years, I, I practiced and more and more, and, and I took the education, and I shifted my work from the hospital to a private clinic, so I, I could practice it every day. What was it that you did before? I was a medical scientist, uh, so I have my PhD in medicine um, and worked with cancer research uh, for many years. So many of my friends are, and my wife are scientists and medical doctors, so the first two years they were, they were think I was talking a little bit strangely about how to, to have a very different approach to treat the body. Uh, one of my very close friends, he's a medical doctor and he's also a professor in neuroanatomy, so he was really said, it's impossible that you can touch or feel that. Uh, and for the first two or three years, he didn't believe me. Then one of his children got sick and he said, well, we have been to the hospital. Uh, couldn't you have a look at my daughter? And, and he was just standing in the room looking and he could see her daughter was starting to do some body movements. And she said, well, I got, I got out of that pain. And he said, hmm, I don't know what you're doing, but maybe I, will tr I would like to try it myself. Yeah, my advances was that, that they knew I was working as a scientist and had my PhD, so they, they knew I was not fooling around and I really meant it seriously. Um, so so they, they believed I was doing the right thing the first years, but they didn't understand it. And, and so I had to, many of my friends and family, I, I tried to put my hands on them to say, can you feel this? And because I know the anatomy and, and, and I can say you can feel this now and some of the medical doctors say yeah I can actually feel this structure I can feel a cranial nerve that that has something to do with my facial movements or something like that so so and I think that's one of the most important ways of how people get to know this kind of work is when they feel it on their own body then they know that now I am a teacher for the Oblitia uh, Institute and I, I s worked very much. They have um, a set of working uh, calling the Brain Speaks, where you try to uh, palpate uh, brain structures, uh, and it's like it's it's the boss of the the physical body. So so when you touch the brain, um, it's uh, you can you can really do something. And and here I connected with a, a brain researcher. And, and offered him to try to feel his own brain. Uh, and he was uh, on the treatment table and he was like, of course, not believing it. And he has been dissecting many brains, so he knows the structures very well. So he says, oh, now, you, now I can feel you have a short pressure on this structure, now you feel this structure. So what we are doing now together is to explore how we can, can see how different diseases relate to, to when we have a brain trauma. Very often you see people uh, later on in life gets Parkinson's, Alzheimer, and now research has shown that the, the circulation of liquids around the brain, if, if that's not clear, you get proteins and waste products, and that's one of the reasons for Alzheimer. Um, so the, the fluid circulation in, in the brain is very, very important and we can affect that by cranial treatment. Uh, that's one of our specialities to, to make the fluid circulation in tissue and especially around the, the central nervous system. So if we get tension, so our, 
most of we think of our brain as, as neurons, but only 20% of the human brain is neurons. The rest of the brain is support cells that we could call like the fascial connective tissue of the brain. And, and that is like in the body we have like a lymphatic system, but in the brain we call it the glymphatic pathway and it's been newly discovered by science. And it, it makes fluid circulation around all the brain cells. And the brain cell needs nutrition and they need the liquid to take away the waste products. So if we have some kind of tension or even small concussions, um, this fluid circulation is disrupted and then we start to have many of the neurological diseases that we see is growing in the world. And it's become a big interest in, um, in the States because many, are, we know it from boxers because they get a hit to the head, but many of the well-paid American football players, they get many small concussions to the head. And actually many American football players are developing neurological diseases as Alzheimer in a very early age. So now there's a research that links it, the fluid circulations to even small concussions of the brain. Um, and that's what we feel um, when, when we are feeling the, the, the tissue around the brain to see, oh, there's a tension, there's a restriction, and when we have a restriction, we do not have this fluid circulation.